right? Yeah. The first 15 minutes of an engine's runtime are the most important 15 minutes of that engine's life. Let me repeat that. The first 15 minutes of an engine's runtime after a rebuild are the most important 15 minutes of that engine's life. I must admit, I can't explain any of these thoughts. This 461 cubic inch beast is going into Jeff's 1974 mint condition Pontiac Le Mans. It has aftermarket cylinder heads on it. It has a ported intake. Somebody's taken the time to actually port match the intake to the cylinder heads should make really good power. When we first rebuild an engine, we have a brand new fresh set of rings. We have a brand new fresh bore, has a brand new fresh cross hatch on it. We need to make those two surfaces match each other. Without getting a good break in, without having proper cylinder temperature and getting the, the rings to heat up and seat into the cylinder, you've wasted your engine. The reason you want to do it on a dyno, there's, there's a, a few different reasons, but let's just start with the most obvious. You can isolate each and every one of the systems. You can isolate the fuel system. You can check the fuel pressure. You can check for fuel leaks. If you do that in your car, guess what's going to happen? You get a fuel leak, you got to shut the engine off. You've just ruined your first 15 minutes. You can check for water leaks on the dyno. You can make sure that everything is good. Today, when we went to put this one in, guess what happened? We had a water leak. We would have had to start the motor up, shut it off. We would have ruined the first 15 minutes. The other side of the carburetor was leaking when we did the fuel test. We would have ruined the first 15 minutes. Running your engine on the dyno, we can control everything. So we can control, and these are the, some of the important things, the temperature the engine runs at. So we can vary the temperature, but keep it very steady. We can vary the load, we can vary the RPM, we can vary the amount of throttle at the amount of load or the amount of load at the same amount of throttle. So we give the engine an absolutely perfect break-in procedure. Yeah, so I'm just going to start rolling this over and we're going to monitor oil pressure. And, uh, we monitor oil pressure there, we monitor oil pressure here, and we monitor oil pressure in the room. And what we're looking for right now is just simply to see, does it have oil pressure? So we roll it over a bit until it has oil pressure and then we'll, we'll see how quickly it recovers. There we are, look at that. Yeah, so that's what it's gonna do. Now what we do is we just check to see how quickly it recovers. Okay, it'll make oil pressure right away, and then we know the oil's going everywhere. And, all right, here we go. We'll try it again. And that comes right up and recovers beautifully. Okay, we've just checked for oil pressure, and we've checked for water leaks. Now we're just about to check for fuel leaks. We're going to work our way through each one of the systems. We check for spark. We have spark. Yeah, I think we're making... All right, exactly as I said, we isolate systems. So in this case, we turned on the fuel system separate from everything else. We had a little tiny fuel leak, so we found the line was just not as fresh as it could be, cut the line off, shortened it, put it back on, tightened everything up, now the fuel leak's gone. Okay, what we're gonna do is start the engine for the first time, and we're going to verify the ignition timing. I like to see somewhere between eight and 18, right about 15 makes the engine start very well. So let's just check the timing, start it up, and see where we go from there. Alrighty, we've gone through each one of the systems and we've like we said, isolated each system. And we did find a fuel leak that we fixed, and we did find a water leak that we fixed. And we got through all of that. We've checked the initial timing, and now what we're gonna do is start the break-in procedure. Break-in procedure works like this. We're gonna bring the motor up on RPM a bit, and then we're gonna vary the load. So that the engine runs at a steady RPM, but it has different loads. And what we wanna do is we wanna see some heat cycling within the motor. So the heat comes up and then we'll actually take the water and we'll cool it down a little bit. Then the heat comes back up and we vary the load up and down. Well, after that, we're gonna vary the throttle, but leave the load alone so that we get a nice break in and the ring seat and everything works as smooth as it can. Okay, we're gonna put a bit of load. Can you hear the load? 
it just a bit. We haven't given it the, the pump, we just give it this. So here's your, it's making 100 foot pounds of torque just idling along there. Because we haven't got much load on it, we can put a bit more load. You'll see the, 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 the foot pounds of torque. So what we're doing right now is we're holding steady RPM and we're burying the load. Okay. And what we're going to do after that is we're going to bury the RPM and keep it at a steady load. So we can now back the load off of it. And we're just coming up on your where your normally your uh, thermostat would be. Yep. So we'll let it come up a little bit, and then we'll cool it off a bit. Then we bury the load again. You hear it coming up, now it's making it work. So we're just giving it some load. You hear it working, or like that, right? So we just gave it 140 foot-pounds of work against. Oh, is that what it is? And then, that's the torque you're putting Then we'll back it off. And then we'll bring it up again. We want it to do some work. We want it to have some load. And we'll keep an eye on our temperature. Now our temperature's getting a bit high. So we can dump some water out. Cool it off a bit. See the water come out? And then we'll add some water back into it engine ran well we were able to vary the water temperature something that we can do here that most dynos just can't do we have the ability to dump the water when it gets too hot or when it starts to come up on say that 190 and we put some fresh water back in which cools it right back down to operating temperature again it went smoothly and now we're just about to start it again and do a small pass okay, we're just about to start this back up we're going to bring it up to temperature then we're going to make what we call a mini pass so probably going to go somewhere from 2700 to say 4800 something like that we'll just make a really small pass and just see how everything looks where the air fuel is going and uh, at that point um, if we're feeling really good we'll probably drop the oil or we'll make a couple of changes and uh, we'll see where the air fuel is and make another small pass and maybe drop the oil at that point do an oil change it responds very well to load it does very well with load it comes right up it's just beautiful there's your vacuum this time and it's making both loads of vacuum We just did our first uh, mini pass so we just did sort of brought it up in and we let it kind of climb on its way through it climbed really 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 slow so I think we're gonna make a few adjustments but we have to read the report but for the first mini pass with no tuning nothing done on it made 530 foot-pounds and 451 horse and we haven't really done anything other than just make a small pass with it and let it come up so now we'll work our way through it and go from there Alrighty, we finished the break-in phase. Uh, we've done a mini pass. Um, last pass one went pretty well and it also gave us some data. It's telling us where we need to go. It's extremely lean everywhere. It's a little bit hard starting. Once you get it going and uh, running along, it runs absolutely great, but it sounds lean and it is lean. So we're gonna um, monitor fuel pressure first. Gonna make a couple of changes. We just did an oil change. We may go in and just check the valves and see if they have tightened up or loosened. They're usually in the uh, break-in phase, we'll check that. Pretty much everything else is going to be monitoring. We're probably going to bring the, oil, the fuel pressure up a little bit and then make another pass. We came up against a rev limiter. Quit right there. 5,000 RPM, it just came up against a rev limiter. Okay, what we're doing with each one of these tuning passes is collecting data and then making changes based on the collection of that data. So what we end up doing here is changing things with the fueling. So in the carburetor we're going to put in either smaller or larger orifices called jets and what we're going to do is make a little change and then collect the data again and see if that change actually worked. After that we're going to change the timing to make it start better. We'll do the low speed jetting to see if it's going to respond better and we'll monitor the air fuel ratio all the way through to check and see where we want to go next after we've collected the data and what kind of power the engine's making. Woo! <laughs> 
Did it ever feel good that time? Jake, did we get our result? Because that felt like, did you hear it come through? How do you know when to back up? <laughs> I told you that time it's still making power. It's still making power. Alright, we brought this 461 cubic inch Pontiac in and we accomplished what we set out to do. We did our break in procedure. We isolated each individual system to make sure they're all going to work and they're all going to function. After that, we did a tune on this motor. We worked our way through the tune, we got the proper timing, what the engine likes, what it doesn't like. Let me tell you, if you don't give this engine enough timing, it will not start. So we did that, then we tuned it until we were happy with the air-fuel ratio and the initial timing and the full timing. We were able to tune this to 626 foot-pounds of torque, 560 horsepower. Really happy with the outcome.